Welcome to the What Wine How Can I podcast. Today we are um, doing a podcast in the, the most special place in the world. This 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 place is awesome. Um, you guys will be hearing some kind of background noise, maybe cars driving by in the background, somebody working in the shop. Um, it's because we're in the living place. Uh, breathing, Morris Motors. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much for uh, for making the time to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've mentioned this before, but just driving by as a kid, going fishing out the river here, we would drive by this place and just look inside through the windows and be like, dude, what is this? Like, see the cars and honestly drill a little bit, you know, do a little window shopping. And and here we are. It's, uh, it's about 10 years later since I the first time I saw this place. But um, definitely, definitely excited to be here and kind of learn about what Mo- Morris Motors is, what it is you do, kind of your story and how, how all this happened. Yeah. Um, how do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start with, uh, with let, let's start with what, what is Morris Motors? So Morris Motors is a, a automotive uh, repair shop. Mm-hmm. Um, we specialize in classic German um, and in Italian vehicles, mm-hmm. a little bit of English stuff also. Um, the cars that nobody else wants to work on. We do a little bit of other things too. Uh, sometimes we get a little hot rod in here and okay. um, or old Japanese cars uh, and uh, all kinds of things. Um, you know, even a pickup truck here and there, you know, okay, modern okay. stuff. So it's just, we've, we're kind of like a, a budget minded repair shop that, that uh, work on expensive, yeah, cars. Ex- expensive cars and, and unique vehicles. And okay. A lot of cars that a lot of the regular shops just don't want to work on anymore. Okay. So. okay. Do, why do you think they don't want to work on them? Is it because they don't know how to, or they just don't want to mess with the? Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, a lot of the newer generation coming in and being your 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 workforce on automotive vehicles just don't have the experience mm-hmm. um, or the knowledge base. Okay. Uh, a lot of a lot of vehicles, a lot of technicians nowadays, uh, if they can't plug the computer in and it tells them what's wrong with it, they don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like a lot of technicians are just part exchangers nowadays. Okay. And you know they take off a broken part, they put a new one on. They don't actually have to figure out what's wrong with the car, how the car works so I, I like how you call them technicians because i would call you a mechanic right mechanics is, is, is a, a mechanic is somebody that fixes something um so let's start with the basics a mechanic what is a mechanic for you and like what got it, you into mechanics uh mechanics for me is just generally anything that you're taking apart and putting back together figuring out how it works you okay. know the mechanics of how it works it's in the name um how it started with me is, is I wanted to drive when I was 10 years old and my dad threw me a car that didn't have keys and motor didn't run and said, here, yeah. if you want to drive, you got to make it work. At 10 years old? Yeah. Oh man, what kind of car was that? It was actually, at that time, it was a little Jeep, Willys Jeep, like a 42 Willys okay. Jeep, like okay. what you would see in a, in a World War II video. You know, oh, movie. okay. So, nice. That's awesome. That's you know, pretty cool. Something simplistic. Uh-huh. Yeah. So most people know what a mechanic is and i mean you just work with tools different types of mechanics like you mentioned different cars you specialize in and these beautiful cars in here um what to me what's is it what is so sentimental is the the why you do this mm-hmm. and kind of the story behind how all of this came up and uh, we talked about this before but kind of just how you grew up and, and your story and where we are now is definitely something interesting. So if you wouldn't mind sharing all that. Yeah. So a lot of this started as a, as a child. Um, a lot of it, I mean, I, I have to say a lot of it is because of my father and my upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad and I, I didn't grow up as a very wealthy child. Mm-hmm. We had to, every, every penny counted, right? We rubbed right. every penny together. Right. Um, but my dad had a good sense of mechanics. Uh, he worked on vehicles since he was you know, able to walk five mm-hmm. years old or so. So he'd been doing it his entire life. Um, okay. He wasn't a very educated man, but he understood vehicles and how they worked. That mm-hmm. was his thing. Um, so as a child, I would go around with my dad. We'd get up early on Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, first thing we do is we look at the newspaper and look for deals in the newspaper. 
Oh, wow. And if there wasn't anything, we'd just get in the car and we'd start driving around old neighborhoods, you know, primarily back then. This was in the Bay Area. Okay. And we just, I'd be kind of the, the scout and I'd be looking down people's driveways as he'd be creeping down the dirt, down the roads and uh, we'd be looking for old cars. Did anybody give you guys any hard, hard all, time? All the time. <laughs> Who the heck are these? But, but the trick was is if we saw a car that like speaked our interests uh-huh. and if the cobwebs were going down the down to the uh, ground, you know, car hadn't moved for a long time. So yeah. we'd get out and we'd see if we could buy it inexpensively. Mm-hmm. And if he struck a deal, we'd, we'd get it home. Um, and we spend the entire week or the next car- couple of weeks rebuilding that car in the garage mm. from, from the engine to whatever the car needed. Okay, that's interesting. That's like, oh, I mean, it definitely is self-employment, but. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, at this time, my dad also still worked at Mercedes of San Francisco, but okay. but this was like a side side hustle and okay. him and i would learn this is how we like interacted you okay. know um, my dad worked you know four twelves mm-hmm. um at mercedes san francisco so i didn't see him much mm-hmm. except for you know on the weekends During the week okay um so he'd normally have friday saturday sunday off or you know or saturday and sunday and monday off mm-hmm. and uh so we'd spend the weekend hunting for vehicles and then then we'd uh fix it and sell it you know okay. and then and then we go out as a family to dinner or something. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so that's so that was just how you guys hung out, spent time together. Yeah, yeah. That's that, awesome. That that's was our. Awesome. I was his little minion. You know, <laughs> like he needed help pumping brakes. That was my job. He needed yeah. help handing a wrench. That was my job. If, you know, I was the second guy. If he couldn't do it all by himself, I was him. You know. So there's there's been a lot of memes uh, lately that I've noticed going around about. Yes, I've held the light for my dad. Like you can't hurt my feelings. Did you hold the light? all the time? You know, light or the cigarette or open yeah. a beer or you know whatever you need. Whatever he needed, I was there. You know, that uh-huh. was his. That was the thing. So, you know, of course, so that action. I learned these vehicles that are now old. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is thirty years ago. So, so any car that you're looking at that's thirty years old, I was working on them when they were old. Okay. So, like, you know, I was working on old. BMWs and Mercedes and, mm-hmm. and Porsches yeah, yeah. when they weren't worth anything when I was a kid. Mm. So I learned this stuff, you know, really early on and then just built on the skill level since okay. then. Re- okay. Refined it. Okay. You know, okay. Made a lot of mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't do, you know, you don't force it. You're going to break it. You right. know, and then it's expensive. And now as, as time goes on, the parts are more and more harder to get and it's a lot more expensive. What, so, what was your biggest mistake that you that you can remember? Uh, jumping in a car with without doing the brakes, and actually it was one identical to this. Uh-huh. Uh, we hadn't we hadn't bled the brakes, and uh-huh. I was taking it around the block, and I came up to the stop sign. And I had no brakes, <laughs> so I went into the car in front of us, and I think oh, I was like man. 13, 14 years old, maybe at oh, most. That's an expensive mistake, definitely. Yeah, it was bad. That's crazy. Um, you know, but times are different. Like yeah. back then, you, you know, I honestly, I ran into a neighbor's car and, uh, and I didn't have a driver's license. Like I was a kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, I kind of got it running in the garage and my dad was at work and, uh, he came home and I broke in the car. So. <laughs> I got in trouble and, and also the neighbor waited for him to come home and we, you know, it was my dad was driving, not me. Yeah, yeah, you know, right, so. right, right, right. So you got you you grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah, sounds like you, that's where you worked. Um, this definitely is not the Bay Area, not the big city where this is now. What, what was the transition and how the, how did that happen? So the transition really uh, came to is when I was younger. Um, we were in the Bay Area, but we'd come up here to vacation mm-hmm. and. Uh, and then at that time we'd we'd uh, we'd go and we'd come up here and and take care of the property that we live at now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my dad always had a. We always talked. My dad and I both. We always talked about opening up a shop here because mm-hmm. uh, we liked it up here. The, the sense of life was much slower than mm-hmm. the Bay Area, mm-hmm. and it was more affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, so eventually, struck a deal with the owner of the property that we'd come and take care of, and and. You know, transitioned all the way up here yeah, um, yeah. 
it, and it was, you know, it was difficult. It was, it was a culture shock of sorts because, um, because I grew up in, in, in the Bay Area taking a city bus to school yeah, yeah, and getting yeah. into trouble. And, you know, if I wanted to go to the city, you just jump on BART and, and get there after school on a Thursday. Right. And I moved up here. I couldn't ride my bicycle because we're on Levee Roads. Uh, skateboarding was out. Yeah. And, and I had no, no transportation. But in the same sense, it, it changed. Um, now I had vehicles on my to my access and dirt roads mm -hmm. and uh, and farmers that I'd piss off because I'd be tearing down <laughs> their dirt road at 60 miles an hour in an Alfa Romeo or something. You oh know? man! So, I mean, how could you get mad at a kid flying on an Alfa Romeo? Uh, too much dust, you know, or, yeah. or just no respect for <laughs> for the crops, for the crops or the cars, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah just. Things like that. That's a, that's awesome. Um, you you mentioned that growing up you had a you had a difficult time as a kid due to some disabilities, physical disabilities. I'd love to t talk about that a little bit. And how you know I've seen too many movies where where a dad has has a kid with with some disadvantages or or, or whatnot, and he kind of just lets it be. Mm -hmm. How was your guys' relationship with your dad and where, which honestly it's, it's awesome where it ended up because it seems like everything worked out beautifully. Yeah. You know, both of my parents were very supportive. Um, I had, I have cerebral palsy and growing up I had to have multiple surgeries, um, mm -hmm. for muscle control, mm -hmm. uh, and, and multiple times, uh, you know, coming home from school in tears because kids you know, pick on you and, and such like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, cause you're different mm -hmm. and, uh, really just the support, not just of my parents, but of, of everybody around me is the only reason why I, I kept going. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you get, you get hit a lot of things. Like, uh, when I was, I was in my preteens, the, the doctor, and I just overheard the doctor talking to my parents, the likelihood is that I'd be stuck in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. uh, past the age of 16 or, or even before, because wow. at that point I was pretty much wheelchair bound and not really a, trying to learn mm -hmm. how to recover from surgeries and, and walking and relearning how to walk because mm -hmm. of the, you know, the pain as a kid, you, but, um, and, and that, and the multiplication of the, uh, you know, people picking on you at school just mm -hmm. there wasn't much drive to do it mm -hmm. but then when i heard the doctor say hey he's probably not going to be able to walk after a certain age anyway um that's kind of when for myself I, I that's when i pushed myself to learn how to walk regardless of the pain okay. and the difficulties um and, and my parents were supportive of that i remember that that day we left the hospital this was a uh, the hospital was in San Francisco. I w went to Shriners Hospital as a child before mm -hmm. they moved to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And my mom took me out to uh, Golden Gate Parks and they gave me a, a walker to learn how to walk. And at that point I was still in a chair mm -hmm. and uh, I literally got out of the car and my mom was getting the, the chair out to push me around. Mm -hmm. And instead I, I just went for the walker and, and literally fell backwards down a huge oh, hill. Man. Just rolled down. Yeah, just, you know, it is what it is. That's but, crazy. but at that point I learned how to, I, I forced myself um, from that day forward. Okay. So, you know, that's what it is. And that's a lot of the reasons why I still work on these old cars that are difficult to work on is because I, I wake up in the morning and I, I'm like, well, let's figure this out. You know, yeah, yeah. It was done then. It can be done now, you know? So, so you, you always, I mean, we haven't no, we don't know each other for that much, that long, but, um, I texted you last night about like a setup here and I loved your answer. You said, we'll figure it out. That seems like that's like your, your life motto. Like <laughs> it doesn't matter what the difficulty is. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll put in the effort, I'll put in the time and we'll figure it out. That's it. So that's awesome. Um, so you grew up. I don't know how you guys ended up in in this shop, but um, what, what what was it like starting to like a brand new shop? You know your hours, all all that. Uh, it's been it's been a long road. You know we we got into the shop. I don't know the exact how we got here, because um, truthfully at that point I was working um, at at dealerships. My father um, started the shop. I can say that we we 
got the shop started because my father and I both were really good friends with the original owner of Mercedes of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And we were taking care of his classic vehicles that he owned. He had a, mm. quite a collection. Okay. And I would go over on the weekends and work at his home. And my dad would work on his vehicles at, in my garage mm -hmm. uh, at my house. Uh, my father didn't have a garage, but I did. Okay. Um, so anyway, through that, he's, he was the owner was talking about selling the the dealership at the time mm -hmm. and uh he kind of he pushed my father into hey you should open shop. up a shop okay and, and just primarily focus on cars that nobody else has the skill level anymore because of, as time progressed right 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 the training isn't there for these old mercedes at the time okay. uh, was a, what what this gentleman knew we worked on the most okay um uh, but my dad and I, we, you know, once you learn the engineering of one car, you can, you can take it onto multiple different The basic platforms. engineering is basic. Yeah. Okay. You know, because, it, um, so anyway, it's going off topic. It's but, all right. It's all right. It's um, interesting. But we, we got here because, because of a one person, one very, inst you know, instrumental person was pushing my father at that time to move here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then over the course of time, I, I took it over once my father retired, but, um, we kind of, we came here at the Delta. Nobody drove Mercedes at the time. Everybody drove pickup trucks. Yeah. They all thought we were nuts, <laughs> but my father and I both had a good following of people that worked. We worked on their cars, mm -hmm. you know, at various dealerships mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, on the side or mm -hmm. just through conversation. Okay. So it started, people came in from the Bay Area or Sacramento or even out of state. Um, so just, they, they shipped their cars here. They shipped their cars here. Wow. To, to have us do it because they take it to somebody local that they have and they don't have any clue or they don't want to take the time. Right. Les you Schwab's know? not going <laughs> to Yeah. Not going to do it. A lot of it is is trying to, you know, like a lot of times we'll get in here and we'll get frustrated because we'll have eight hours in a car just trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Mm. But I can't can't you know rightfully i'm learning from the car i'm learning how to figure out what's wrong with this one particular vehicle right because it's so so different all the time yeah so we have to you know i have to charge accordingly like i can't in my mind i can't charge you for eight hours of me learning what's wrong or how to fix your car yeah i just charge you to fix the car so right if you're not home then your family expects to for you to make money when you're not home right yeah. so um, sometimes, you know, it's a wash. I have a lot more time in the car than, than, than I charge for, but, mm -hmm. um, that's what it's about. That's, you know, it's keeping them alive where a lot of other shops either charge huge amounts of money to work on them or they, they won't work on them at all mm -hmm. because they don't understand it or they don't want to take the time to learn it. Right, right, right. Um, and so what is, what is like, um, you're the shop owner now, your father retired as a shop owner i'm sure there's a bunch of car enthusiasts enthusiasts out there what is the balance that you found between life and shop i from what i'm hearing this is your life yeah it uh, pretty much has become my life <laughs> my wife gets pissed about it but you know it is what it is yeah yeah so how, how what is it like managing um an automotive shop and just not any automotive shop it's tough first biggest word is tough okay um it takes a lot of compromise um, and a lot of every morning I wake up and I make a list mm -hmm. of what I need to accomplish that day. Okay. Um, that's, that's the only way I can stay on track. Like I write down what I need to do and I check it off as I go. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's so quick that the phone will ring and somebody has a car in Elk Grove or Sacramento or, or in the Bay area that they need you to come look at, or it's, it's mm -hmm. too good of a deal to pass up. Mm -hmm. So you got to stay focused. Okay. Um, biggest, biggest thing is stay focused and whatever that goal is, you know, keep, keep your sight on it. Right, right, right. Whether it's, it's just getting through that Thursday mm -hmm. or if it's paying a monumental bill that you are not expecting, you know, mm. cause you know, it's a shop, things happen. Right. Um, you, you never know. Accidents happen. Yeah. Um, because you work on these uh mercedes is like the specialty the classics um 
what are some things you love about them and what are some things you hate you hate about them one of the one of the worst things i hate is is the car coming in and not knowing what had been done when okay. it comes from another shop or various other shops mm -hmm. and and this gentleman and whoever it is uh they're frustrated already because they've spent thousands of dollars most of the time trying to figure out how to keep the car running mm -hmm. or or get it to run okay. or not leave it on the side of the road so you spend a lot of time and the frustrating time is trying to figure out what somebody else has done mm -hmm. or tried to do or what they've manipulated mm -hmm. to make it to where it is to run but not really okay because they didn't take the time to do it right that's so, one of the so i can kind of see that where like somebody for example has a five thousand dollar budget they have spent four and a half thousand dollars and it's not working right and they come to you and they say i have five hundred dollars <laughs> left to make it good and everything else beforehand wasn't done right correct yeah you have to start over you, you know like and that's one of the biggest things is is uh trying to f get a baseline you know mm -hmm. you start with the basics you, you you go back to you know go dig out the manuals and, and figure out what was the originality where's the motor supposed to be set up like you know mm -hmm. the, um, and set it all back to original and start over. And, you know, a lot of times I do it, I do it f because I want to see that person leave with a smile mm -hmm. and I want to be able to say, yes, I made it work for you. Okay. And there's some times where I can't, but, um, for me, it's, it's more like the value in that, in that customer than it is the dollar. Okay. You know? Okay. And I mean, I'm sure you've, if you haven't loved to love them before you've learned to love these cars so it's like a probably a kind of sense of pride you have when a car is towed in here and then drives out on its own that's exactly what it's about you know driving getting a car towed in and watching it drive away and yeah. come back and the stories the customers tell you about the cars you know once or they'll meet other customers of your own mm -hmm. because they have the same vintage vehicle you know okay, okay. so uh, can you share a, maybe an interesting story? Like, what's the most interesting car that you had come through? And you're like, this is the backstory on this thing. Oh, there's a lot of them. Really? Every every car has a story to tell. I mean, it, and it's it, it really comes down to you know every car has a life to tell about. Um, one of them, actually, it's a car that I own. Mm -hmm. um, one of the coolest stories is is a car that I own that was originally my father's car. Mm -hmm. um, so we really started because we of our love for Mercedes 6.3s. Mm -hmm. um, it's original, you know, it's a big motor mm -hmm. and a small car mm -hmm. uh, of the 60s and 70s. And my dad owned one in the early 80s when I was first born. Uh, he bought it from a, a old rock musician mm -hmm. um, out in the Bay Area. And then we we moved to Florida after that. My dad put it in a building. Mm -hmm. The building got sold, mm -hmm. and they, you know, through the course of that, um, he lost the car, oh, lost wow. ownership of the vehicle. Yeah. And then fast forward maybe 30, 30 plus years, and somebody reached out to me on social media and says, "Hey, there's a there's an estate sale at this shop in San Rafael," uh -huh. and sent me a couple pictures. So. Um, my girlfriend and I at the time, we, we jump in the car and we go and we go look at this estate uh, or this shop that's full of vehicles mm -hmm. like Alphas, uh, Ferraris, mm -hmm. Mercedes, old chunky cars that I'd never drive, yeah. you know, old European stuff that I don't know anything yeah. about. Yeah. But uh, a whole bunch of just smorgasbord of stuff. In the back corner was my dad's old 6.3. Wow. From, from 30 something plus years ago. Never had been moved um, yeah. from that point. So he parked it there, they sold the building and it's just been chilling. Just hanging out. Wow. So over a course of time, I was working on a Porsche for a friend mm -hmm. um, who wanted a 6.3. Mm -hmm. Neither my father or myself at the time had the, the finances to buy the car because mm -hmm. um, they wanted a good amount of money for it and and to buy your car back yeah and and at the time we didn't have the you know we, we it's not that we didn't have the funds but we didn't want to allocate the funds to Too buying bad. a vehicle mm -hmm. um so what we did was i passed it on to a friend 
mm-hmm. whose car I was working on. And then uh, he he bought it mm-hmm. and we got it here and we went through the car and it's exactly what my dad remembered about the car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, it turns out my friend didn't want it. Okay. So over a course of horse trading and, and a couple of dollars ended up with the vehicle I did. Mm-hmm. So I, I gave it back to my my dad and my mom as a as like, hey, this is your old old oh, car. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you know they drive it around. They it's been in a magazine with them and wow. Um, but now it sits in my garage. Yeah, yeah. And and we take it out. You know. Wow, that is a very special story. That's yeah. That's awesome, dude. Something something lost. And you said it was thirty years later that yeah. you found it. Yeah. Man, that's insane. I mean, he was definitely happy to see it. Same condition and yeah, and the, and that car has a lot of story. You know, prior to that, mm-hmm. you know, my dad um, built. He got the car broken, and him and his brother built the engine out of three other engines. You know, at the time for the for the Rockstar. Yeah, no, I, well, for, for the same car that the Rockstar owned. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. you know, and it's like, it's just. And that's the way it goes. And all, every one of these cars that customers brings in, especially yeah. if they inherit it from a friend or, or family, mm-hmm. you know, there's always a backstory, you know. Dude, um, that's, that's super cool. That's probably like one of the, uh, that's a special thing about working on classics or cars that are so old is because, hey, this isn't just, this isn't just a 2020 Mercedes with everything brand new. And don't get me wrong, they're beautiful with all the stuff inside they have, but something that has so much history behind it yeah and seen so many you know so many different places in the world yeah you know driven so many roads and have so many stories to tell you know family stories you know i have a car back there in the corner that that uh was this family's original car when she was born it was her mother's car and and they somehow kept a hold of it yeah and they put it in a garage and um their parents were in the army but they put it in the garage and moved all around the world and the car stayed in the garage for 60 years. Mm-hmm. We pulled it out and and uh, we're trying to make it run okay. so they can relive, you know, all of those family stories as their youth, you know, their, Dude, that... when they were kids bouncing around in the back seat. Okay, so you find a car or somebody brings you a car that's been standing for 60 years. What what is what is the first like five steps that you do like let's see if we can make this thing live or breathe again. The first thing I do is I'll go go and 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 um, see if, see about the fuel system. The mm-hmm. fuel system is key. Um, you know, if the fuel tank is is gelled over, if the pump can be rebuilt, mm-hmm. uh, if we can rebuild the pump. A lot of the pumps aren't available, so I have to take them apart and really delicately take it apart, save gaskets or O rings or seals. Really, and uh, and clean them just just by hand. That's, hand clean it with, yeah. with a pick. You know, like like a like a dentist pick yeah, yeah clean the junk out of the orifices and that's crazy. And, uh, and same thing like a lot of the old mercedes are all fuel injected uh-huh. fuel injection pumps are are gelled over you gotta take them completely apart mm-hmm. um and clean everything um then you then you you know this is providing that the engine turns over the first key is see if the engine turns over mm-hmm. you know hey if the engine turns over then we can make it run okay um so engine turns over mm-hmm. make it make the fuel system work mm-hmm. then the car can run mm-hmm. then it's cooling system uh and then if you're gonna drive the car brakes are brakes are you know number one yeah so <laughs> as you've learned yeah you gotta have safety first man you gotta have brakes yeah so that's key um I don't know. Like if you're driving the car, the number first thing I care about is brakes. Okay. Who cares about anything else as long as you can stop? If you're yeah, if you're driving as long as you can stop it, yeah. that's true. If you're driving, the f- most important thing is brakes. Um, if you're if you're trying to make a car run, fuel, you know, mm-hmm. and a and a motor that turns over. Okay. Um, a lot of times I'll go to the customer's home wherever the car is or wherever the car's being stored. I'll go and uh, pull it out myself mm-hmm. because. If you send a tow truck driver, um, they don't have any respect for. They're just gonna hook it up and pull it on pull, the truck, yank it out, you know, and and break something in the process or or dent something. Mm-hmm. Um, like this one car I was saying, you know, that was that customer's childhood car. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to that garage, okay. unburied it out from everything because mm-hmm. they were rented the home and and they 
renters had put all the home, you know, stuff, stuff. Uh, on top of it. So I cleared out the garage with the with the owner present, mm -hmm. um, and then we put it up on my car trailer, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was a full day of of just getting the car out of the garage and yeah. on the trailer, and and then she followed me here, and um, she's totally excited. She calls every week, like, "Hey, how's the car going?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and and uh, and you know, truthfully, I, other than tr this engine doesn't turn over, it's been uh -huh. sitting for too long, and they didn't they didn't um, didn't drain the water out of the block or or oh, have okay. any coolant, so the the engine is frozen. So I'm trying to get it to unfreeze. Okay. Um, so you know, it's it's one of those things. Um, it, it just kind of happens. Yeah. Um, somebody listening to this or watching us today, and they're like, "Dude, I want to be like Sutton <laughs> and work on these beautiful cars. I want to have our shop." Um, obviously, you had so much prior experience before you were had the opportunity to run this place. Um, what would you say to somebody out there, girl, a guy? That's that's that one that wants to do something like this. Anybody who wants to do it can do it. All it takes is patience and and uh, building upon mistakes. Okay. Really, like my recommendation is, if you wanted a car, whatever car that is, yeah. let's take for an example. Let's take me for an example. Mine at the time, I I it was a car that came my way. It wasn't a car that I really looked out to go get, mm -hmm. but I had a '66 El Camino when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Um. And that car was a foundation of like seeing a project through. Mm -hmm. um, I took it down to the bare frame, the body mm -hmm. off the frame. Mm -hmm. Every day I'd, I'd move a little further along and it mm -hmm. got to the point where every bolt, every wire, everything was out of that car. Wow. And then I reassembled the entire vehicle. Okay. You know, cleaned everything, painted everything, polished, however, ran the wiring, fixed, yeah. fixed the rot. You know, just learned, learned on the car. My recommendation would be get a car or whatever it is, whether it's a car or something else, see the project through, start from whatever it is, learn every task that it has to take to, to complete it, mm -hmm. whether it's, it's welding new metal in, whether it's um, just taking your patience and cleaning it, you know, um, mm -hmm. or polishing it mm -hmm. or, or just, uh, laying down the carpet, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, take every, every piece of that and take pride in every part. Try not to, uh, to sublet it out to somebody else, you know, help try is fine. Figure it out yourself. Yeah. Try to figure it out yourself. Make it happen. Like Sutton would say. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen. You know, you can always, you can always ask for help, yeah. you know, and have somebody, a lot of it, like I'll learn new things by having a friend or somebody who does something mm -hmm. and then I'll just duplicate the same thing that they do. Okay. You know, I learn from them too, but I'll take that task and I'll, I want to do it myself. Okay. Cause that way I have experience doing it. And that's, that's the thing. If you can gather the experience doing it, you can do it, you know, and, and just don't be afraid. Right, it may right, take right. a long time. Uh, you may have to do it six times before you figure out how you did it wrong the first time. Right. But, and especially now with the YouTube and Google and everybody yeah. else's experience that you can learn from, obviously you didn't have that. Yeah. Uh, a lot of mine, like I, I was telling you earlier was, yeah. you know, I, I bought a Porsche when I was 14, 15 years old for 500 bucks. Yeah. Um, it didn't run. <laughs> it uh, didn't have a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it was there. And it was also a time where a lot of people didn't want Porsches too. They weren't very valuable like they are now. But I didn't have Google. I couldn't access information so quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. I went down to the library and, and had to photocopy a, a, a manual mm. or, or memorize it or get to a certain point and then have to go back and read more to information the <laughs> to the library, you know? Yeah. So, um, or not having any information at all and just trying to figure it out, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and making mistakes. I mean, I've blown up plenty of engines not knowing what i was doing but that's great. like customer engines or your own engines customers and my own you know you know you make mistakes trial and error trial and error you know and that's then you first. and and if you do make a mistake the 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 most advice i can give anybody is, is get on the phone and tell them mm -hmm. say hey I, I screwed up i'll uh 
tell you I screwed up and we'll yeah. make it happen. You yeah. know, we'll just, make it happen. I love that. Yeah, figure it out. I, so. I see, I really see a, like a parallel between the way you grew up and in, in your physical limitations and then now wanting to like working on yourself, making yourself, you know, uh, pretty much walk like the doctors would say you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to walk and then your love for these cars that other people say this car will not drive or walk per se mm -hmm. and then you just like dude i'm gonna make this happen would you say there's any correlation there or probably probably i don't even notice it because i you know it, it it likely is a lot to yeah. do with it you know okay. that's my the way i you just you gave yourself hope and you want to like yeah. you love giving others hope yeah you know I'll, help anybody I can in the best way that I can. Yeah, yeah. So where can um where can people find you? Do you have a website, IG, anything else? Yeah, I have a uh website, it's morrismotorsusa.com. Mm -hmm. Um and then we are on Instagram and Facebook under Morse Motors USA. Okay. Um otherwise just here at the shop. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pretty much live here, so <laughs> <laughs> every day. Um so the link will be in the bio we'll put the link in, in the bio underneath the video um so you guys are more than welcome to check it out and yeah if if you want to see a professional working on some beautiful pieces you could probably stop by yeah son's super super friendly super friendly guy um and then if you obviously if you guys have something and you need a quote stop by check out this place it's a beautiful place i mean just from the outside looking in the building i mean it just looking at the building is an entire story of itself. Yeah, the building's cool. The The building is actually an old uh, GMC dealership. Really? Yeah, that was uh, in the in the 50s. They sold cars out of the shop area. And, and where we're sitting right now was a Maytag uh, storefront. Okay. For like washing machines back, you know, when refrigerators back when they That's first crazy. came available. That's crazy. So it's kind of cool. It's really neat. Um, it's been various other things in the, mm -hmm. in the past, but... It's cool to bring it back to to what it is. Um, have, have people ever come back here and like, dude, I used to something here? All the time. Really? Yeah, all the time. Um, it was a body shop. It's been a radiator shop. Uh, it was like a canoe place for the Delta back uh -huh. in the 80s. And, and a lot of people come in and they love it, you know? Yeah. Um, so my next aspect is kind of like to do something of that nature is kind of do exotic or, or classic car mm -hmm. sales also okay. in okay. here because it would be kind of neat it yeah. would be neat dude and yeah. this is like a, it's a beautiful location right up by the river and you have a for a small town you have quite a bit of traffic out here yeah and it's only yeah the traffic's growing quite a bit too because it's becoming the, the the other way to get to the bay area you know? right because so. the fires or something else yeah. the highways close and everybody's coming through here so that's awesome well son thank you again yeah, so much sir for making time um it was honestly a pleasure for like when i reached out to you i was like dude i don't know who, who this who this person is i hope they reply because i love this place but and you obviously did it um so I appreciate that again. Thank you so much. And, Absolutely. Um, we'll definitely stay in touch. And, you know, every time I drive by, I'll be stopping by. Saying, What's up? Welcome anytime. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, sir.